today's and i start with the oic demo and go through what are the what is the oic architecture what are the components in the oic and uh, 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 how does it work together and how they all work together that's what we're going to see and then we're going to see the course contents of this uh, 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 OEC course, what we have designed for, and I'm going to walk through the whole course content uh, uh, in Excel sheets. That's how we do at the end of the sessions. Okay. <clears throat> so before going to the Oracle Integration Cloud, as we know, once we have the Fusion applications in the picture, it's all into the cloud. So Oracle comes up with the various deployment option to install cloud, and uh, uh, the popular deployment option to install the Fusion applications in the cloud. Oracle will maintain it and we use it. And think of various deployment options. So one is a, 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 one is software as service where Oracle provides software application for us and we use it. And second thing is we can buy the software from Oracle and we can install it in our on-premise too. So they're not giving the latest uh, release uh, version though, but they're giving uh, a, a, a few versions back releases for us to buy. And you can install it in our on-premise on -premise systems or our own cloud data center and where we can maintain the application as well. The most popular mechanism is Oracle maintains it in the cloud and we use it, especially Fusion SaaS applications, we use it, right? So there are limitations in the Fusion SaaS applications whenever it resides in the cloud and it, is being, it, is, it has to be used as it is given out of the box. With the SaaS application, we have various tools in the picture. Let us say if you take a plain SaaS application, these are various inbound integration tools through which you can interact with the Fusion applications basically. If you use in-house applications or third-party applications, we have various tools available out of Fusion applications through which you can keep interacting with the Fusion applications. Spreadsheet data loaders or HSIM spreadsheet templates or file-based data imports, HSIM data loaders. Or we can, Oracle also provided some row or some SOAP REST atom web services out of the box as part of SaaS model. We can consume those services and keep interacting with the Fusion applications. Similarly if, it is, similarly, if you want to get data out of the Fusion application, Oracle has given various reporting tools. You can get there use Bean Publisher or OTBI or HSM Extracts or Financial Reporting Center or Web Services. We can read data out of the Fusion applications and keep in our uh, on-premise or third-party systems. If you see this inbound outbound mechanism, we have a cloud and we have on-premise system or a third-party system. All we need to do, we have to pull data out of the cloud and push it to the on-premise system, or bring the on-premise data and push it to the cloud, or cloud to third party, or third party to the cloud, or on-premise to third party, or third party to on-premise. It can be, interaction can be from anywhere to anywhere. So how do we do the interaction from all the systems together? When I say interaction doesn't mean it's not only the, uh, just calling one component or, or uh, inserting data in other component, not like that. While interacting with the multiple system, there should be a process defined between the system, between the flow, between the flow, right? So from uh, when, when one connection, one connection starts from one system to other system, there are multiple points in between. Everywhere there are many transformations and many, many conditions based on which we have to do that call or based on this, we have to do this call, we have to do many more things. Absolutely, most of things can be done with the custom code, but by doing that, it will be heavy maintenance to interact with the multiple systems. I have mentioned third party, the third party can be another SaaS application. Let us say we have a cloud here and where we can interact with the on-premise application or interact with third party application like a Salesforce or, or uh, 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 Microsoft Active Directory, or it can, be a, it can be another banking system or another warehouse can be any third party system or it can also be any on-premise system. So as I said, it can, you, we can go with your custom code and this custom code can be resided in the on-premise server or it can be resided on your own server. That's different, that's okay. So definitely maintenance of this will be very, very difficult to maintain hundreds of processes if you have a large organization maybe we need a tool which can streamline this process basically. 
So for that, Oracle came up with a tool called Oracle Integration Cloud, basically, OIC. They have Oracle Integration Cloud Service. This Oracle Integration Cloud Service helps you. It has a lot of features inbuilt. Means it has a lot of pre-configured connections, pre-configured adapters, pre-configured integrations, pre-configured agents. There are many things given out of the box in the Oracle Integration Cloud through which you can make the interactions between the systems much easier. Uh, oh, much easier, basically. So let us see what is this Oracle Integration Cloud, what components are there in Oracle Integration Cloud, and uh, how they work together. Ask me one question. What was the atom in the previous to previous slide? ATOM. Atom Fleet is actually event-based uh, uh, subscription. Example okay. in Fusion application, whenever uh, let us say an expense got created, immediately uh, uh, I want some callback action should happen in my EBS system. Okay. So what we can we can subscribe to that event whenever an event happens in the Fusion applications. Immediately, what needs to be done? We have some events given out of the box in SaaS that called Atom feeds. So what we can do, we can subscribe to the Atom feeds. So what happens whenever that specific action happens, immediately something will get triggered out of the Fusion SaaS application. So Oracle, there are, there are, now Atom feeds are not defined for every, every service in the Fusion application. There are some set of, uh, 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 for events, Oracle has given this uh, Atom uh, feeds, it's a REST API basically. Um, if you want me to show some water there. So Atom is like a, a business event which we used to have in ERP? ERP, absolutely. Exactly the same. So if you go to the cloud application, if you go to let us say human resources, and if you go to the integrate, and if you go to the source cloud, so Oracle has given some uh, atom feeds actually. So these are the feeds given by Oracle, let us say employee feeds. If any employee updated, uh, uh, we have last update date is the parameter. If any employee is updated, uh, then immediately do some uh, action basically. So it will return these values saying this is the old attribute, it is a new attribute. So we can, we can, uh, registered for the atom feed and we can keep getting the information when all the change happens. So not, as I said, not every object has the atom feed given by Oracle. For example, for employee update, assignment update, new hire termination. Similarly for workforce structures, they have given it. That is if salary change happens, give me the update. We don't have salary change atom feed here. So for every, every, every module, they have given the atom feeds in the Fusion application. So uh, let us say if we take the finance, Integrate so REST API. Oh. Oh. And these atom feeds we can modify or oh, no, no, we had to use oh. what is given out of the box. Okay, okay. So all we need to do we have registered for the atom feeds so that we will call we get call back request when all the change happens it's like a polling the polling uh, 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 the instance i want to demonstrate that anyway in our OLC classes that's fine Ravi. Oh, sorry <clears throat> that's fine Lakshmi. yeah you can go ahead okay so coming to the oic again uh, uh, um, let us see what are the components are available in the oracle integration cloud and how they work together there are primarily three components that are available in the Oracle Integration Cloud. We can call it as one thing is the integrations, second thing is a process builder, third thing is a visual builder. The other three components are available out of the box in the Oracle Integration Cloud. Integrations, as name mentioned, basically we can design the integrations here. When we say representing the integrations, basically we can establish connections from any source to any destination, any place to any place. Means 
we can establish a connection from fusion application to any other SaaS application like fusion application to Salesforce, fusion application to uh, 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 Workday or fusion application to any other SaaS application. There are some constraints provided that SaaS application should provide some adapters for of it. Or fusion can also interact with your on-premise application. That on-premise application can be an EBS application or your custom application too. It means if your custom application, you can interact with the custom database server too. Or from fusion application, it can also, also interact with the uh, 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 you can also interact with any other SOAP service or any other REST service or you can also interact with any other uh, uh, non-ERP applications too. So you can do interactions with from Fission application to any application in these integrations basically with some limitations I'll talk through that, right? So while doing that we had to walk through some lookups, packages, agents, adapters which we are going through in detail. Second thing is automated process applications. This is nothing but it's a SOA component. It's a business process manager where you can define the processes. You can quickly define your uh, applications to the process applications. In a process application, if you define any process, example, if you take the out of the box fission SaaS application, let us say you are creating a location. When you create a location, there's a process defined by Oracle already. What is the process defined by Oracle already in the out of the box SaaS application? When you create a location, we can do have there are some set of rules defined there. Means when, you, when a location is created, you can trigger a workflow. Means you have a provision to create trigger a workflow based on the approval rules. How do you set up? That is a process defined by Oracle. Means when location is created trigger this create location approval workflow if it is provision I and mean, it's given out of the box though we have to set up the approval rules means the process is defined it's similar if you want to define your own process then process builder is one which is useful to define your processes very quickly while defining the processes it can be a simple application or while defining a process, you might interact with other applications. When interacting with other application means you have to bring the integrations into the picture. You can use integrations as well in your process flow. So process builder will help you to define the process applications. Visual builder is actually is a lightweight component which is entirely created based on the JET. That is a jet engine, Java, Java uh, extension, JavaScript extension. Basically, what you can do is we can quickly create web and mobile applications with the same look and feel of the fusion applications. In this, what you can do, you can use the processes, whatever you have defined already in the process builder, you can use the processes in these web applications or mobile applications. When you click on this button, trigger this process. When you do this, uh, when you do some actions, trigger this process, right? So you can create your own custom page. Let us say, let us say, let us let us think of the scenario. Oracle haven't given a process flow. Let us say, uh, uh, if you add an address for your spouse, example, I'm saying, if you add an address for your spouse, Oracle haven't given any 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 work workflow or any process. In that case, what I can, I can create a page where I can go and create an address. When I click on the submit button, I can trigger a process in the back end, uh, uh, in, the, in the application page. I will define that process in my process builder saying that when I click on the submit button, immediately define some process, wait for some approval or wait for something to happen or trigger another third party application to bring some data and do the validation. I can do some validations in process builder and visual build it all about how you make it appear to the end user through mobile or through web applications. It's not it's lightweight. It has some limitations. If you wanted to go some beyond some level of implementation that visual builder is not the right one we have to go to java cloud service i will talk about that differently but these three things are given out of the oracle integration cloud 
So primarily from now onwards, the demo, I'm going to talk about integration specifically, how it is defined in the Fusion applications, uh, Oracle Integration Cloud, and how it is being used. The same diagram what we have before, it is an integration cloud where we have, it is a cloud where we have a preloaded adapters to interact with the Fusion applications, or preloaded adapters to interact with the third party SaaS applications, are preloaded adapters to which you can interact with the on-premise application like Oracle, EBS, SAP, or other legacy applications. So we have all these things given out of the box with Oracle. With PZD doing the configuration, you can interact with the Fusion applications. You'll see that. Before that, let's see where the process builder is. It is how the process builder looks like, where you can define the processes. And if you go to integration cloud, if you click on the processes, you end up in the process application page where you can create quickly create application. You can create the decision model and you have various number of options available. And similarly, we have visible builder cloud service. It will also if you go to integration cloud and click on the uh, uh, um, mobile visual builder cloud service, you end up seeing this. This is a very, very easy way of creating the application. All you need to do is drag and drop the visual components or objects onto the page and define the flow basically. And uh, in, the, in the Visual Builder Cloud service, you can also drag and drop the processes what you have defined. Sometimes you can also use the integrations what you have defined for some actions, right? And these things, the way you see whatever processes builder or integrations or visual better cloud service or integrations, they work together. You can use integrations in the process application. You can incorporate your integrations into processes directly from the process editor so that that integration will get kickstarted whenever the process needs. Similarly, you can use process applications in the integrations. In the integration orchestration, you can invoke a process. Right. Whenever you are calling, we are you are you are pulling data from one system and sending data to another system. Before sending data to another system, you want to trigger a process. Maybe you want to do some validation, or you want some manual entry or human human uh, approval. In that case, you can insert a process application into the integration too, or you can you can use process in a visual builder too. Right. In visual builder, as I said, when you click on a button, some action should happen. Or a trigger, or a UA action, or UA component, something has to be done to kickstart a process. So all these three things will work together basically. So if you see a simple integration flow, how does it look like? Where we where we are, if you say integrations, all it is how it looks like basically. It is an integrations uh, designer. It's a user user interface. All you need to do is simple basic uh, integration as diagram actually. We have much more design message exchange patterns based on that we have various uh, integration styles. So it's one of the style, a basic routing actually. So in this case, what is happening to see that in the left side we have source system. And that source system is a generic SOAP service. It is officially, we are actually, we have one SOAP service. And right side, we have the another SOAP service is target connection. We have one source connection and we have one target connection. So what does it mean? This source connection, we call it as here, we are, we are actually, it is called an invoke connection. Means if someone want to run this integration, someone has to kickstart this source. How do they kickstart this source? Whenever you create the integration, once you define, what is my source connection? What is my target connection? From my source connection to target connection, what is my data mapping? If my source connection only sends the request or receives response to, if it receives response to, what is the mapping between my target system to the source system? Right? So this mapping will happen here when we define the source connection and target connection. But to make this integration to start, someone has to kickstart this source connection. Their integration cloud service will help you. Once you define the integration connection, what is our source, what is the destination, that source can be anything. 
your fission application destination can be your EBS system or vice versa or uh, the source is Oracle uh, your fission application it can be a, it can be a Salesforce can be anything can be any other scenario so once you build this integration so we have to define who should invoke it there ICS will help you basically for a simple way is ICS will create a visual file for your integration and you can use that visitor file to invoke your source connection or what very very various various ways of connection through which you could also invoke the integration cloud service through scheduled orchestration or app driven orchestration we have various orchestrations available through which you can invoke this so this is a simple diagram what i have shown if you apply the same thing to SaaS to SaaS integration is one business use case right the use case is when a case is created in Salesforce, they are being synchronized with service now as incidents. When the Salesforce application is there. Whenever you create incident, create uh, uh, create a case in the Salesforce, that case incident case should automatically would go to Oracle right now, and it should create as an incident there. It is nothing but whenever a create happens here, query the data what is created. Send it to the Oracle right now and, and insert the data here. It is a simple use case. So, what is the Salesforce? It is a non Oracle SaaS application. What is the Oracle right now? It is a SaaS application. So, we are interacting SaaS application to the SaaS application. Who is helping here? OIC is helping here. It automates the real time integration. Streamlines business processes by interchanging across business applications. It's one use case. Let's take another use case. Update of opportunity in Salesforce. Whenever an opportunity record is updating in the Salesforce, they have to be propagated to the on-premise Oracle order management. They should go to the EBS whenever their update happens in the Salesforce opportunities. Means here i'm actually sending i'm actually doing the sas and i'm doing to the on premise so it should be the sas to on premise integration so what is happening here when our record is updating in the sas automatically send get the record and load it to your on premise which is on premise is e business suit so e business suit may have a list of apis for the order management oracle e business suit may have a list of apis available to update the uh, order management uh, 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 record. So Oracle EBS may have a list of APIs. So what the APIs, what are the APIs there, that API will come in the EBS as part of integrated SOVA gateway. And if anyone works in the EBS, they can understand it. Integrated SOVA gateway have a list of APIs available. Whenever we have a connection with the EBS through EBS adapter, so this OAC will have the adapter to that to your specific uh, uh, e-business suit. We have to do some setups. We have to run an agent in the EBS so that your EBS will be connected to the OIC. OIC can query the can get the APIs from the EBA e-business suit in your instance. And what it can do when a record comes here, it can call the specific PL SQL API from OIC itself. Whenever it calls a specific specific uh, uh, API from OIC itself, then automatically record will get updated in the EBS system. Here is one example basically. So if you see this on-premise system, though it looking straightforward, few things has to be taken care of, which we'll be talking about in detail, basically. So we have to uh, uh, make sure we have a SOVA gateway enabled here, and we have to make sure there is one agent given by Oracle Integration Cloud. We have to download that agent and install in the e-business suit. There is channel opens from your e-business suit to the cloud application because we have a security in place. There should be a dedicated channel should open between these uh, uh, two systems. Once we do that, then we have to make sure the agent is up and running and it is active. Only then this OIC can create a connection with the Oracle e-business suit provided the proper security configurations once the connection is established and the connection is tested it means that you can call any pl sql api which is available in your e-business system as simple as such basically 
in place of the remains previous scenario what i was saying sorry what i was saying basically whenever oracle right now is again it's a saas application like oracle hcm cloud or oracle financials oracle erp cloud how it is so what happens whenever oic establishes a connection with your fusion application and automatically this fusion application all the crud operations create read update delete operations will be exposed as a web service they will be exposed as a web service to the outside world so what happens when oic establishes connection with this oracle right now we have to do some configurations there is something called service catalog what oracle will do the oracle will offer a service catalog it is soap digital file which will have all your apis which are given out of the box in the right now and if you have any rest services in the right now oracle provide interface catalog which have all the list of rest services available in the oracle right now so if we once we once we are while we are establishing connection we have to configure those interface catalog and service catalog in the connection when are you establish the connection with those catalogs you have full access to the web services in this specific instance provided we have to do the configurations as well and also that user should have proper integration job roles once we have signed it then from here we can call any web services in the oracle right now as simple as such but connection is quick connection is quick and easy no problems in that but all you need to do how do you transform data from here to here there you have to work more that is what we are going to learn in detail actually and because this kind of integration the advantage is it is faster time to market it is very much user configuration approach with minimal coding it provides an intelligent drag and drop mapping tool when we do the transformations we have enough mapping tools where we can use the uh, xpath functions and also the basic functions of this mapping is actual transformations is xslt functions basically what we use in typical ba publisher models so we can use that tool and we can quickly do the transformations much and easy and it provides a commonly used adapters and pre built configurations as i said has many adapters comes out of the box if you want to connect to salesforce we have a salesforce adapter if you need to connect to right now it has a right now adapter if you need to connect to hsm cloud it has hsm cloud adapter if you need to connect to the ebs we have an ebs adapter there are long list of adapters available i will show you that i haven't take the screenshot of it long list of adapters available using which you could easily establish the connection to the destination system or source system and not only that there is something called oracle marketplace in the oracle marketplace it's actually a, a oracle marketplace is oracle marketplace is actually what you can do from here you could able to just go to the products go to the pass and here go to the integration cloud if you go to oracle integration there are long list of the pre built integrations example if you want to interact with oracle erp cloud to oracle wms cloud download it is free download this integration once you download the integration and upload it uh, uh, import into the integration cloud service and you can use the integration right away but we have to do some modifications though but it is a pre built integration someone built it already similarly oracle has some cloud to third party payroll system it's again uh, free you can download it you just do some tweaks and you can interact with the systems not everything is free basically some are see the type of integrations what is saas to on oracle cloud platform it is one uh, 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 integration so it's not free so basically we have a long list of integrations here you can use it some of them are built by oracle itself some of them built by uh, a third party people or even if you built one and if you think that integration is helpful then you can you can publish it here and you can uh, uh, you can make it as example rates loader is not free we have to pay for it which optimize your finance with the operation of the rates maybe it looks like every day we can load rates into the finance maybe we can build the integration and you can download the integration and import it to the integration cloud service and use it anyway we are seeing one example for that in our upcoming classes so we have a long list of things 
and it simplified application integration automatic provision under the covers simplified design time and runtime console increased business agility out of the box functionality and adapters it's very fast in development basically it's a web it's a, it's a web based point and click integration experience auto associate preloaded with your existing oracle saas subscriptions basically it will keep track of your saas subscriptions too whenever you think it is subscribed you are to subscribe to the fusion hcm or subscribe to the erp cloud then automatically those adapters or those connections will be available to you out of the box and not only that whatever the uh, security uh, 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 roles you configured in your organization level those con security users and roles can be can be used to define the security in your integration cloud service too we have a rich monitor we can clearly monitor what messages are going and each message we can also identify what is the payload being sent from the source system what is the payload being uh, uh, received by the destination system we can absolutely keep track of it and also for every integration we can have some fields added as a tracking fields through which you can track how the integrations are uh, going on basically and it's managed by oracle backup oracle manages it backups patches upgrades and secure highly available with the clustering customization and extension by oracle cloud sdk because sometimes we may not have our own uh, we may not have the adapters what is needed you can have your custom adapters and also while creating the of transformations maybe we needed to have a coding functionality then we have a api library using the javascript you can create your own functions registered to the api library so we have various mechanisms to have a constructs uh, programs in our fusion applications so usually what is a quick what is, i mean if you see the course contents what we are going to cover in oic basically so a quick introduction of fusion applications because most of us know it we didn't cover it and uh, introduction to the integration cloud service in fusion applications typically what are the different types of integration saas saas to on premise saas to third party saas to saas integration introduction of oracle integration integration cloud and what are the various features simple architecture of uh, what is integrations process builder and a visual builder and then basically from here on we are going to do the real setups basically once we decide to purchase the integration cloud service and once you identify that okay we are going to purchase it so and there are way, there are two options for you to go and purchase it one is one is pay as you go pay as you go means based on the utilization of your cloud service they are going to charge you how the utilization happens basically when now you want to buy the integration cloud service so what i can will what i can we is going to up the uh, 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 oracle has to provide some cpu and memory to you and also how do they charge is based on the number of messages you communicate between the systems so the what what they will say is based on the number of messages you communicate between the systems based on that they are going to charge so how do you know that is rattle cloud wise estimator so as we know oracle ICS comes on a platform integration. So if you go to the integration, if you go to pricing. So here, uh, pay as you go, five thousand messages per hour. For five thousand messages per hour means five five thousand uh, uh, communications basically. I mean, from uh, if you receive source to this source to OIC, OIC is one message, OIC to destination is second message. So if you have five thousand messages per hour, then they're going to charge dollar one point two per hour. Our monthly flexibility, basically monthly flexibility in sense, you are paying the amount ahead of time. So basically, again, there are a couple of things. One is Oracle Integration Cloud Service standard, where you get this all SaaS integration adapters. but not the on premise adapter 
if you want the on premise adapter you have to go the oracle integration cloud service enterprise it only gives the saas integration adapter so it means you can only interact with other saas applications but if you want to interact with the on premise ebs application then we have to have on premise application adapter only then you can connect to your on premise and the standard service doesn't comes with the oracle process builder the process automation is not available in the standard service if you want to build the processes you have to buy the oracle integration cloud service enterprise visual builder is available in both the places and remaining all are common so we have to identify again what are the prices showing here it's oracle prices but when we go and talk to oracle it can always get the lesser price basically so once you decide that we need to buy the oracle that typically we have to provision the instance so we're going to talk about how to provision the instance first time how do we access the cloud or my services integration cloud how to provision the instance when i say provision the instance how to create the instance and once you create the instance how to start the instance once you start the instance your integrations can be can run maybe you don't want to consume if you make let us say let us say as as the integrations are 5000 messages per hour maybe you think that okay maybe we won't run the integrations at some point of time or like let us say uh, uh, maybe next one week it's not really happens in that case what you can know you can stop that service then what happens whatever the memory or whatever the cpu allocated to you will go away then you won't get charged for maybe for the, the for practice instance or people who buy for the company specific uh, demo instances typically uh, they can maintain like that whenever they do they will restart the instance and they can use it whenever they don't want they can stop the instance to but lakshmi for this exercise purpose if you want to do the hands on we just don't need ics we need at least uh, some kind of fusion instance access as well as uh, yeah. Yeah. at least one or two sample uh, uh, whoever wherever we can test this adapter yeah. so do so, you have anything as a part of this course or so coming to the pass access we'll talk about that later coming to the we will getting as part of this course so typically what we need right definitely we need to get the ics integration cloud service apart from this we need one fusion application and one ebs instance so that ebs instance actually again i think i want to talk to you on that so that ebs instance we need to have the ebs instance to run somewhere and we have to in that wherever the ebs is running we have to install one agent actually it's very simple thing once we have it we won't be touching any of the ebs configuration we'll be consuming the apis only so we need one ebs instance we have fusion instance and we will we will figure out a way for this pass ics uh, instance and for ebs one i think again we need to gather together how to get the ebs instance so if you are organization going to have some ebs instance then we can use it or we have or we will uh, uh, provision it for us so that is another thing apart from this again if you wanted to interact with the salesforce or if you want to interact with any other third party uh, a saas application if we have the use case and if you think we need it for sure then we have to look for that one too because we don't have the public uh, we don't have the all we have only the fusion instance so from fusion we can actually test our custom databases or we can we can look for we can interact with sftp integrations or we can uh, 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 Are we can fusion to fusion, fusion HCM cloud to fusion uh, finance, or uh, HCM to HCM or finance to finance. We can build all the integrations, but if you want EBS instance, definitely we are going to test it. So we want that uh, EBS instance. And if you think any other use cases, then we need that uh, Salesforce or those. So definitely EBS we need, uh, uh, Lakshmi, because uh, most of our cases. I'll tell you exactly what from where we are coming for this training. So most of our customer who want from moving from on premise ABS R12 to Fusion, right? Mm -hmm. So none of we are seeing which are going in one shot complete from ABS R12 to Fusion. Everybody will is going in the plan way. It means it's phases. Okay. Somebody goes SCM one, then finance. So like that, everyone has. But even you leave your bolt on and custom applications behind, right? so what is happening is everyone has this question like uh, recently we went for one customer which went to scm live 
but then again you need employee data back to e bills because Correct. you need that uh, approval finance supply chain everything works on yeah. those data, yeah. data right so ebs to fusion that case is definitely we need that's like basic core of this training uh, which we are expecting yeah. and then uh, we have a sub couple of customer in fusion who they want to uh, you know extend it uh, in terms of the process changing the workflow and changing the uh, this uh, ui so small ui for example i'll tell you example we have some integration with the uh, sap module which is basically provide you the let's say you don't have a gop gop is one of the module in order promising okay mm -hmm. so you build one integration okay mm -hmm. but you want to don't want to get an exclusive security and maintenance for that application to show it to the customer so what they want is in the fusion itself we can if i can spawn a small page okay which can even pull the data and show them because they don't want user for multiple security multiple logins gotcha okay so those kind of scenario we have i can list it down everything for you when we have Right. but definitely we need an instance to be sorted out okay yeah because without practical knowledge or theoretical is good but then uh, yeah, yeah, you absolutely. don't get the feeling so yeah. now we are going to practice we need instance without without use cases we are not going to so we do have a ebs instance i do have many ebs okay. instances uh, which is in my company but i'm just thinking for so what about ics also ics uh, also that you are you recommend that we use our own ics uh, because then you need because some you need an saas offering it tagged with that right whenever you need no, an ics no, no, not necessarily because if you have ics instance provision we can we can use our saas application we have the saas application right our instance so we need let me note it down so you need is we need for this training purpose we need a saas instance we need an oracle ebs as a minimum and then we need an ics uh, uh, instance right three things correct okay. again the saas instance it's may you can or cannot have because we already have it Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Okay. But I'm mean, just thinking for the team uh, uh, because if they want to practice and all, I'm just thinking because your instance sometimes they goes and come back right on the right. monthly basis. Sometimes I saw that even we are going with the SCM training right now. Right, right. I'm just thinking like when we have this one, uh, how do we set up? Because even you finish our training, still we need it for absolutely. all other yeah, yeah, uh, you know training and customers and all those things. Right. let me think about it uh, uh, and i'll i'll speak to ravi on that how we can manage but i got the idea but okay. definitely lakshmi we want to extend little bit if you can help us maintaining at least at least creating one or two uh, workflows even the simple yeah. one will work it can be as simple as this that i submit the invoice more than 50000 right, i need right. an additional approver on that right, right. yeah i mean um, yeah. understood so like hiring uh, if i'm hiring a somebody who is having salary like more than uh, the 1 lakh uh, 2 lakh dollars in yano then i need just an additional approval so something so, kind of which can give the feeling okay so yeah i mean uh, yeah primarily you are saying whatever is not offered out of the saas instance we want actually approved right yeah so uh, i'll tell you when so the salary one approved. it is there actually what are you are saying that specific approval flow is there okay so we have something called uh, uh, i mean uh, Uh, acquisition request which we come with that means if if there is a third party involved uh, because of the audit and compliance requirement so they want other people to approve it which are not the part of oracle okay. and we don't give everybody oracle license oh, yeah, absolutely just to well, approve it case, you know? absolutely we need uh, yeah agree so auditor has some i'll give you the cases that's not a problem we can pick up uh, one or two that but let me just figure out what the instances i mean we talked about it but i thought maybe just understand it what exactly oh, yeah. then So you got understanding now, right? What exactly? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Ravi and uh, Nikhil, I think, and all others who are in the room doesn't matter for us or no. You go ahead and ask your question. It's a good for always to have the brainstorming. I was just uh, thinking like, uh, so Ravi, Nikhil, I mean, and all others who ever join. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any, other, any other thing that we are looking for right now? Yeah, maybe if I cover the whole yeah. those contents, what I'm going to cover, maybe you have. Uh, Go ahead, sorry, Lakshmi. I thought maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe you have more right. questions. So basically, we are going to talk about provisioning the instance, how to start the instance once your organization decides it, and also how to maintain the instance. So we're going to start with this, and then what we will immediately jump on one quick workflow, basically, so that we can immediately see how the things will work. So I want to take some simple workflow. We have many services available. so we can take a simple workflow which will maybe we can talk from uh, we can invoke from one soap service to another service something we have many things many things available right 
So I'm going to talk about what are the components available in the OIC integration. So adapters, connections, integrations, designer, quick review of the whole interface. And then I'll quickly create one basic workflow so that you completely understand how the things are happening internally. Once you do that, then I will start talking about what are the prepackaged components available in the integration cloud service. We build integrations that is from marketplace. We can get it from Oracle Creator, a third party one. Pre built connections, which, which are coming with the pre built integrations, and how we can download that and how we can import it, how we can use the pre built integrations, and how we can modify it. And also, we'll talk about maintenance of integrations. Basically, once you build a quick integration with the basic workflow or a pre packaged integrations, how we can uh, use the integrations to export from one instance to other instance by packaging the integrations and how to import or export the packages. How do you do the version controlling of the integrations and how you can activate and deactivate and where you can monitor the integrations, where you can monitor the activity stream, payloads, agents, all that. And then we talk about, we start talking about in detail of everything. Coming to adapters and corrections, what are the adapters that are available? What are the packaged adapters that are available? And how we can use adapter and how we can create the connections, how we can uh, do the connection properties of triggering property and invoking property and the security behind each connection because every connection will have its own security policies which we need to get satisfied. So we will uh, uh, establish the connection properties. And then we talk about several adapters. One is conferring Oracle application cloud adapter, that is Hexam cloud or a finance or whatever cloud adapter, and non Oracle SaaS adapter like a Salesforce, like that. Conferring a SOAP adapter if you want to call any SOAP request, irrespective of uh, whatever I'm talking about, then we can configure SOAP adapter. And similarly, if you have any REST service available, how to configure REST service REST adapter so that we can call that REST service and, and make REST service available in your integrations to make use of. And how to configure database adapter if you have a custom application in your on-premise and if you want to interact with the database, how do you configure database adapter? And once we have the adapters using, once you know how to use adapter and how to establish connection to that respective system, it means that our source and destination systems are available with us. What next? Create the integrations. Before creating the integration, let's, we will try to have a quick understanding of various message exchange patterns, synchronous uh, 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 transfer, uh, tra transactions or asynchronous transactions. When I talk about asynchronous, there is something called callback and no callback transactions and one and the one is event based atom field what i was saying event based transactions and how do we use how do we use those exchange patterns in our uh, 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 integration cloud service i should say oic message exchange patterns how we can use it these message exchange patterns typically comes based on the adapters we choose example if your source system is ftp we are using ftp adapter FTP adapter means what we need to do. Whenever FTP file comes, an integration should get invoked. In that case, maybe that FTP adapter, may, based on the FTP adapter, our message exchange pattern will be different. Maybe in that case, a uh, 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 message exchange pattern will be only the asynchronous mode because FTP can't receive any callback request. In those cases, we have to use one specific style of integration pattern. Maybe that is called a schedule orchestration. So here we are going to talk about what are the various integration patterns are supported based on the message exchanges. There we have various integration patterns, basic routing, app-driven orchestration, scheduled orchestration, published to Oracle Integration Cloud, or subscribe to Oracle Integration Cloud, and a file transfer, uh, or no, not file transfer basically, those integration, clouds are, uh, integration patterns are available. Once we understand the integration patterns, then we start defining the integrations basically because we have, we have connections available. We understood the integration patterns and how the integration uh, architectures looks like. Then we can define the integration. We quickly go through the integration designer overview. We can start creating the integration. We can define the trigger or a source connection and properties of the trigger and source connection and define the invoke or target connection. And we do the mapping between the source and target while doing the data mapping. We have to look at data mapping functionality in detail actually. 
various ways of doing the data transformations, visual mapper, export functions, advanced mapping using the J developer XSLT editor. We are going to see this one as well, some example, and how to create that advanced mapping in XSLT editor using J developer and how to import it back into the integration cloud. And uh, we also in the data integration, we do the, the tracking fields and adding enrichments adding enrichment in sense when you are calling from one source to destination in between if you want to call another service that is called enrichment or when you get when you're getting response from the destination you want to call another service that is called enrichments and how do you activate the integration how do you test the integration by simply generating a visual file or other way of doing the things so till that basically we are, it's still the basic integrations and then from here we are going to talk about advanced integrations basically Advanced integration divided in two ways. One is content-based routing and another one is orchestration. The content-based routing, we talk about what is content-based routing and how to add the filters and routing expressions, routing path and mapping data. And orchestration is very, very, very important, which we use it very, very frequently for all our complex integrations, basically. We have two types of orchestrations. One is app-driven orchestration. One is scheduled orchestrations, basically. When I say when I say orchestration, a simple example is that I say we get uh, we are calling an order service, which we get all the orders that has been created for that day. Maybe the number of orders created are five thousand orders. For each order, you want to call a web different service. You want to call a different connection. Means we have to do a while loop of all thousand or five thousand orders. For each order, you have to do a different. Uh, for each order, based on the condition or based on the logic. You wanted to call a different uh, destination. You want to set it to a different destination. If you want to use while loops or for loops or a switch or, a, or uh, 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 other ways, basically we have to use this orchestration. And also we have a scheduled orchestration. Basically, I was saying that FTP site. If you want to, whenever a file is placed in the FTP server, immediately I want kickstart chain integration. Those are things called scheduled orchest orchestrations. And how do you do that? And how do you define trigger invoke actions? And what are the integrate inbuilt activities? These are all the inbuilt activities which are completely based on Oracle BPL Process Manager. So we heavily use Oracle BPL Process Manager functionality here to define these several sections. Assigning the data, calling a function. Here we use a JavaScript and where we registered in the API library, mapping the data and staging the files, and the collection section using for each, switch, while, and scope and a uh, uh, general section where you want to notify the people whenever something happened or you want to make a note for the developer or you want to keep a separate logger for each transaction or you wanted to wait the integration tools wait for something to happen all those things can be defined and remaining all error handling or exception handling how do you do that basically when to stop it when to call back it where, where there are different types of fault handlers scope fault handlers and global fault handlers Things in scope fault handles nothing but the specific scope related exceptions. Global fault has nothing but global in, uh, exceptions. How do we handle that? How it is captured in the error, error hospital? And how do we use that in the monitoring the integrations? In the monitoring the integrations, we, can, we keep monitoring the uh, uh, errors basically. And then I will talk separately about on-premise integration to enable the on-premise integration, what needs to be done. What is an agent? What is an agent framework? What is an agent group? How to download the agent? How to install the agent in your EBS system or on-premise system? How to run the agent? And how to monitor the agent is running and how to make sure the connection is established successfully and how do you call the on-premise APIs in the Fusion application? We do that all in on-premise integrations. And also we can learn how to schedule the integrations and security behind the integration. That is what I have defined for the integrations in the OIC alone, basically. So this is my plan is for 20 to 25 hours kind of uh, course that I have planned for. And I haven't added the process manager and the visual builder cloud service. So as we said, maybe we can plan for it. Uh, we have more number of hours. Okay. Yeah, now we can have, a, if you have any questions, let me know. I will, I do. Lakshmi, actually, we have a last session for training now, me, Ravi, and all. So maybe we can leave. Uh, if you can send me this Excel, it will be okay. Then I'll go through it and then I'll talk to Ravi about the instance and all. Is okay. it okay? Sure, sure. 
Okay. We have today last session for our SCM training actually. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. After that, we'll be all free. <laughs> okay. Bravo. Thanks a lot, Lakshmi. Thank you. Yeah. See you. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye.